home to me. Uh, and I've been a lot of different places in the world, and you know, there's a lot of nice places to be in the world. I used to live in Tokyo and in Paris and all these nice places, but coming home to Melbourne is such a great pleasure. I'm always happy to, to see the, the doors at the airport open and I can get a good cup of coffee for a change after traveling all over, all over around the world and I can come home to the best coffee in the world. Being a part of RMIT and the research culture that's building here, it's, it's rather exciting. You have a bunch of new people that has come in. Uh, there's, a, there's a few established people that are very capable researchers and as a group had a very fortunate career to have such good students and good colleagues to make me look good. So it's, it's nice to have the opportunity to speak to people about um, my experience, but um, had it not been for them, it wouldn't have been nearly as in trouble as it has been. Yeah. My research is mainly uh, on things that are very small. Uh, we work on quite a variety of devices for looking at diagnostics uh, for medicine, uh, for surgery, uh, for drug delivery. One of the things that attracted me to Melbourne was uh, the substantial concentration of research hospitals and all of the research in, in healthcare that is occurring here. Uh, we're able to translate our research work over into uh, improving healthcare and lifestyle, and one of the theme areas of RMIT's uh, interest. Uh, we're working on a drug delivery device um, and also for vaccination. Uh, the device uh, is a handheld uh, little nebulizer and it's able to nebulize uh, even large molecules that, that uh, seem to be pretty promising for um, delivering uh, a variety of cancer drugs and also a new, uh, new generation of vaccines that can be uh, formed in a couple of weeks in response to an outbreak. Uh, another bit of work that we're, we're working on is uh, uh, understanding quite a uh, curious set of physical phenomena the formation of uh, thin fluid films at the nanoscale um, under exposure to uh, ultrasound, and the formation of uh, uh, droplet rotation and particle motion in drops at, uh, at, at very high frequencies, of excitation, formation of capillary waves, a whole bunch of things that and from a physical standpoint shouldn't happen. Well, what we're seeing, for example, we are able to take small droplets of blood and uh, spin them at high speed. Uh, and we, by spinning them, we're able to do uh, centrifugation and separate out the red blood cells, uh, white blood cells, and platelets and various things out of these, uh, just a whole blood sample. And uh, it, in a sense, it replaces what an entire lab uh, would do for you a, giant, a large micro a large centrifuge on a on a table, and uh, with with a handheld device. Once we get going, then uh, in understanding what's happening, we tend to find a lot of different applications, and um, uh, it's it's sort of an enjoyable part of the job because you see you know solutions to long-standing problems. When I was awarded the Vice Chancellor Senior Research Fellowship, I was thrilled at the opportunity. Really what it provides me is the ability to, uh, to focus on the things that I'm really very good at, uh, you know, research activity, uh, leadership aspects, those sort of things, and it just allows me an opportunity to focus on things that are important to me. And uh, by extension, to my, important to RMIT, I hope.